recording? Yep. Okay. Um, thanks everybody for coming and listening to this. I am going to be talking about coffee. Um, my name is Eric, and the reason I am doing this speech is because 64% of Americans, the majority, drink coffee almost every morning. That's said by the American Coffee Association, so take that as you will. And I want to show you my way of brewing coffee, which is using a French press, which is this fancy thing. Um, the reason I am doing this method is because it's the way I prefer it every morning, and I want to teach some people how to try a new way of brewing coffee. Uh, the things I'm going to be discussing are the beans, the brewing method, which is French press this time, the water temperature, which I'm now boiling, the actually brewing of the coffee and the tasting it afterwards, which is important to brewing your own coffee. So the beans I have today are from Brazil. They are roasted by a guy locally. He sells it at the farmer's market and old market every Saturday. Um, I actually get this delivered to my house, but you can go down there if you want to try it. It's half answers coffee. It's really good. Um, and the reason you want to get local coffee, like I did, is because once a package is open with coffee in it, two weeks is how long it takes for unground beans to start to lose flavor, and two days is how long it takes for ground beans to lose flavor. I actually ground these this morning, so they are the freshest they can possibly be, so hopefully this is good. Um, when you buy your own coffee, the most important thing is just to keep it airtight. Um, and you want to choose your own location. This is from Brazil, like I said, because I'm trying it out. But I've also tried Guatemalan coffee, which is known for being more chocolatey, maybe a bit spicy. Um, then there's Ethiopian, which Starbucks uses the majority of, I think, which is more of an earthy, deep flavor. Um, California also grows their own beans, but I haven't tried it because it's like $40 a pound, so I'm not willing to go that far. But if you want to buy American, you can. Um, when talking about beans, the grind size is also very important. I grind these in an electric grinder, but it allows you to choose how fine of a grind you want to use. Things like espresso use very fine coffee because it's all packed in there and has to be able to make it through. Uh, drip coffee just is medium, it's standard. And French press, which is what I'm going to be making, uses a very coarse grind because it has no paper filter, as you see. Um, and it needs to be able to not let all those grounds get through it, so coarse grind. Now the brewing method is also important to the taste of coffee. The most popular thing right now is of course Keurig because it's convenient and you just have to use those little pods, but a couple downsides to that is it's much more expensive than anything else. Buying your own beans and grinding them yourself is incredibly compared to Keurig. It also has much less waste. You don't have to be, you're not throwing away plastic every time you make a coffee. Um, drip coffee, it takes forever, and it also uses those big paper filters that are a pain, which isn't entirely convenient in the morning unless it's timed or something. Um, something I also use is called an AeroPress, which uses a tiny little paper filter, and you basically just press down on top of it using an airtight plunger, valve, and it just forces it through, and it's super fast and convenient, and all you have to do is rinse it off when you're done, which is great. Uh, French press itself is usually preferred for a lot of people who love coffee because it doesn't use a paper filter. Since it doesn't use a paper filter, all of the oils that are in coffee that normally get trapped by that paper can just go right through. So with French press, you get a much stronger, deeper coffee than you would with any other process. Um, one downside, though, is that since it doesn't use that filter, some of the grit does get into the bottom. So people who drink French press generally don't drink all of the coffee. They leave a little bit at the bottom as to not get that grit. Uh, so water. It is now done, and I have this at 98 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, generally, you want to have your water from around 80 to a little bit less than 100 degrees Celsius, or 176 to 205 Fahrenheit, that's because you don't want to use boiling water when making coffee. When water is at its absolute boiling point, it starts to break down a lot of the acids that are in coffee, and those acids are incredibly bitter. So people who use completely boiling water when brewing coffee 
make very, very bitter coffee, and then it's gross. No one wants to drink it. That's a very common mistake. Um, having too cold water under ABC is also not a great idea because it doesn't extract as much out of the grounds as you normally would want, so it becomes very weak. So if the water's too cold, it's very weak and under extracted. If it's too hot, it's very bitter and acidic. So you want to get right in that point. Um, best way to do that, if you don't have a way to boil it with a thermometer like I do, is to boil water and then wait 10 to 15 minutes and then it should be at the right temperature. So the French press here um, uses two tablespoons of coffee per cup. This is one liter, so I'm gonna be using eight because I'm gonna make the whole thing. Um, I put two in already, there's four. Um, now the steps to brewing coffee are, of course, measuring everything because the amount of everything you put in it is important. Um, after you pour the water in, it's important to let it sit for a little while. That is called blooming. And the point of blooming your coffee is to allow the CO2 that is trapped in the coffee to escape. That's where all the bubbles on the top are. Um, the CO2 in coffee is also very bitter, so hopefully letting it bloom like that should let it get rid of that CO2. Um, after that is stirring. Uh, once it's bloomed, you just kind of want to stir it a little bit so that all of the coffee grounds are being used and soaked in the water. And then you want to wait three to five minutes. Um, that just allows all of it to extract and to get the full flavor of the beans out. And with the French press, you are going to be actually pressing into it, which instead of having the water just drip down into a container, the French press itself is the container that you use to pour the coffee out of, because when you press the filter down into it, all of the grounds will be at the bottom, and all of the coffee will be at the top, so you can just pour it out very easily. Um, the last step of brewing coffee is the tasting. And the reason this is important is because you want to do what is best for you. If you like milk and sugar in your coffee, that's fine. Um, if you like a black, that's fine as well. If you like Keurig coffee, go for it. It's whatever is most convenient. Um, but when you are brewing your own coffee, you can change up the method however you want. If it's bitter, maybe use less grounds or use colder water. If it's too watery, use more grounds to make it hotter. Uh, let it sit a little longer so that it absorbs more. And some people even use a log to record how much of each ingredient in the temperature. That way they can absolutely narrow down what they like. And that just allows you to enjoy your coffee more. So find your preferred method, do whatever you want, and just experiment. And do whatever you feel like. Um, in conclusion, this is just a small part of coffee that I love to learn about, but I thought I would share it. Um, I hope I interested you, and I can hope that more people start to brew their own coffee because it's a very enjoyable process. I love doing it in the morning. It's how I wake up, um, and I love drinking it. And it also lets you support local businesses if you choose to buy from people who make their own coffee locally. So I've got cups here. If anyone wants to try, you can do that once I'm done.